Today, we're going to talk about what to do if you stalled when you're doing intermittent fasting. Now, this topic comes up quite often when I do my live show on Friday mornings. So I'm just going to create this one video to cover all the basics. Now, our bodies have been evolving for hundreds of thousands of years um, in relationship to starvation. Starvation is a risk to your survival. Human bodies have gone through a lot of starvation. And so they have developed and have adapted certain mechanisms to help them survive. So they're in your body and they're waiting, okay, when you stop eating. So when you start fasting or you do fasting for a period of time, that sends signals up to the brain that food is scarce. So we're going to get some hormone adaptation. Our cells are going to become more efficient. You're going to start to develop uh, this condition called autophagy, where your cells are efficiently recycling damaged proteins and giving you new proteins. But your body is taking the resources it has and becoming just very, very uh, frugal and very efficient. And you're going to lose less nutrients. And uh, you're going to have certain things that preserve your muscle from being used as fuel. The body is going to start tapping into its fat. When you go on a weight loss program, when you want to lose weight, that's very, very anti-survival because your body does not like to lose anything. So this is where the problem is, knowing how to do it correctly. And of course, they will tell you that one pound of fat equals 3,500 calories. And all you have to do is eat less calories and increase your exercise and you're just going to lose weight. But we know that that doesn't work because the hormones start to slow down the metabolism. So the rate at which you burn fat is different from one person to another. In fact, you may even know people who eat not even close to as healthy as you are, and they're losing weight, but you're not. So we're going to talk about what to do. First thing that happens when you go on a low-carb diet or you fast is you start to get rid of your glycogen reserve. Okay, that's stored sugar in the liver. And with this stored sugar, you have a lot of water. So you're going to drop probably a good eight to nine pounds right off the bat. And just don't, don't confuse that with actual fat because that's, it's going to be water, especially initially. The key to overcoming a stall or a plateau is really understanding what you're trying to do. The key hormone that keeps you at a stall and keeps you plateaued is insulin right there. Insulin is the switch that if it's high, you're not losing fat. If it's low, you are going to be burning fat. So this is what you need to focus on. In other words, out of all the actions that you could do, the question is, what is going to reduce insulin the most and the second most and the third and the fourth and the fifth? So I put these in order so you can kind of Use it as a little checklist. One of the best ways to know if your insulin is going down is with appetite. If your appetite is going away, insulin is coming down, okay? If you still crave, if you're still hungry, we know you're not tapping in the fat. So this is a real simple way. Rather than even doing a test, just go by your appetite. If you cannot go for a period of time without getting hungry, we know the insulin is still a little bit on the high side and you probably still have insulin resistance. If you're new to my channel, definitely make sure you watch the video on insulin resistance because you need to understand that as well. So what do you do is the most important thing to attack this problem. You fast longer. You keep going longer and longer. And then when you eat, you add more fat to the meal to be more satisfied to go longer. Okay, so the longer the fasting, the less you're going to trigger insulin because insulin is triggered not just by carbohydrates, it's triggered by eating. So we want to fast longer. So just keep working on that. And the rule of thumb is do not eat unless you're hungry. Okay, so people eat when they're not hungry. Don't do that. Go as long as you can. I always recommend consuming nutrients when you're fasting. Very, very important, simply because you don't know if you're deficient. And most people are deficient in nutrients. And so if you're taking vitamin supplements, just getting the nutrients without the calories, then you're going to get the benefits of fasting without any type of side effect. So that's what I recommend. All right, number two, 
lower your carbs, lower than they are right now. Try to get them as close to zero as possible because carbs are what keeps the insulin elevated. Also look for hidden carbs. It could be MSG in certain foods that can actually affect insulin, which is not a carb, but it's a chemical that can stimulate insulin. Also, a lot of the keto treats and the keto foods now have maltodextrin or, or dextrose. Avoid that. Some of the sugar alcohols can affect your digestive system. So even though they're low on the glycemic index, they can definitely create bloating. So you just want to not do any of those keto snacks and lower the carbs even more than you're doing right now. Number three, lower the stress. Your environment is crucial. There's so many people that I used to work with in my practice that all we did is get them to isolate the stress and fully handle it or improve it and they finally started losing weight. Why? Because your stress elevates cortisol. Cortisol starts mobilizing not just muscle protein into sugar, which is turning into fat and raising insulin that way, but also it causes the liver to make sugar, okay? Out of ketones, out of fat. So we want to lower the stress, stop watching the news for sure. Okay, next one, number four. Start increasing your sleep. Every time that you get insufficient sleep, it's going to affect your blood sugars. Okay, you're going to, you're going to increase hunger, so it's going to affect insulin. So sleep is vitally important. Do whatever you can to also take naps, stay in bed, rest more, which will also help stress. Okay, number five, decrease the dietary fat. So whatever you're doing right now, bring it down to about 75 grams. Not below that, just cut down the fat. Don't add the extra MCT oil. Don't add the extra keto bombs at this point. Number six, add exercise while you're fasting, okay? So you want to increase the volume of exercise. Do it on a gradient. Don't overtrain, but definitely add more exercise simply because it's going to help. Um, probably add another 15%, which might not seem like a lot, but it can help. Number seven, I'm not saying come off your medication, but all I'm saying is that medication can easily block your results. So check with your doctor if you're on certain medications. Maybe you can find out some other medication that has less side effects because you'd be surprised uh, how many different types of medications actually cause insulin resistance. Number eight, chances are you have insulin resistance. Do things to improve that situation, to make insulin less resistive. How do you do that? There's some great things you can do. Berberine is a very powerful phytonutrient in certain plants that is compatible in effectiveness to metformin, which is a diabetic medication. It's been thoroughly researched. So this is a very good one right here. Take more potassium, which can help insulin resistance, as well as the B vitamin, especially B1. Fiber, make sure you have enough fiber from vegetables. Now, why? Because the microbiome turn the fiber into butyrate. Butyrate improves insulin resistance. And as a side note, butyrate is very anti-tumor. It's very, very uh, good to protect you in certain ways. Chromium is a good mineral to help the blood sugars as well as this. Bile salts. That's interesting. Purified bile salts not only help you extract fat-soluble vitamins, essential fatty acids from your fats, but they can also help heal the inside lining of your colon. They can also help a fatty liver. They can also help improve insulin resistance and help lower your blood sugars. Garlic is another powerful uh, natural thing to help insulin resistance. Okay, so I want to show you this next slide right here. I'm going to talk a little bit about while you're fasting, if you're doing prolonged fasting, let's say you're fasting for two days or three days or even seven days or longer, um, you have, you're trying to avoid the macros, the carbs, the protein, and the fat, right, when you're fasting. But you also have micronutrients. That would be like the vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, amino acids, essential fatty acids. There is no essential carbohydrates. So what benefit is a carbo going to give us? 
Well, <clears throat> certain carbohydrates, like vegetables, will give us vitamins, minerals, and trace minerals. When you're fasting, you can find maybe some type of concentrate that will give you the natural vitamins, minerals, and trace minerals instead of the carbohydrate. So that way, uh, we get the nutrients and not all the calories. Now, protein. Here's one challenge, especially when you get into prolonged fasting. If you're going seven days, you're, you're going a month, whatever, people are concerned about losing their protein from their muscle or even their organs. So it wouldn't be a bad idea occasionally to test the waters with certain types of amino acid blends, okay? Not the actual protein, certain amino acid combinations. Now, protein will give you amino acids, it'll give you vitamins and minerals, so, but you're already taking vitamins and minerals, but what about amino acids? Will this break a fast? Well, there's something called net nitrogen utilization. And this basically is a percentage of how much nitrogen is being wasted as a um, byproduct from protein. So in other words, when you eat eggs, for example, you're really only getting about 48% of those amino acids that are being used by your body to replace uh, muscle and other proteins. The rest is turned into waste and fuel, okay, as glucose. Well, this is why consuming protein when you're fasting is not going to work because over half of this is going to turn into sugar. That's not going to work. If you consume fish or meat, you're only use, utilizing about 32% and the rest is turning into waste or glucose. If you're using soy protein, you're only getting 17%. The rest is waste or it's turning into glucose as sugar, right? Whey is even worse than soy. You're only getting 16%. The rest is turning into waste or glucose. This is why on the insulin index, this is the worst. There's a lot of triggering of the insulin hormone when you consume whey. The reason I'm talking about this is that there is an amino acid blend that you could take that gives you a 99% utilization. And the research has been done by Professor Luca Moretti. They did the research on the essential amino acids and exactly what pattern the body needs to be able to get the great majority of it turning into muscle or replacing muscle or use primarily as protein synthesis. Only 1% of it turns into waste or sugar. So even though this amino acid can trigger insulin, there's nothing there to be stored as fat. There's nothing to be converted into fat compared to these right here. So if you're doing a longer fast and maybe you want to maintain your muscles or you want to keep your strength up, this would be an acceptable thing to take because you're not taking the protein, you're taking the amino acids which require no digestion and you're taking it in a blend that doesn't have a lot of waste, like branch chain amino acids, for example, that will really spike your sugar. In fact, if you were to consume branch chain amino acids, you may find the next day your, your appetite is higher because it affects your blood sugars. But when you do something like this, you don't have that same effect. If you would like more information about this, I put a link down below. All right, let's talk about fat. Primarily, we use fat for fuel, but we also use fat to extract the fat-soluble vitamins and also get the essential fatty acids like DHA and EPA. Those are the omega-3 fatty acids. When you're doing longer-term fasting, um, you definitely want to take fat-soluble vitamins as well as uh, maybe cod liver oil or some fish oil. Cod liver oil is a little bit better because it has DHA, EPA, vitamin A, and vitamin D all together. Okay, so the reason why I brought all that up is because if you're getting all your nutrients when you're fasting, you're maintaining your health as a primary goal. And part of being healthy is to keep up the required nutrients that you need. Thanks for watching and definitely apply this information. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications.
daily notifications. That sounds weird. Well, I'll just remind you on a daily basis. How about that?